Eric Ten Hag really isn't using these two weeks away from football, the international break, to sort of chill out, put his feet up. Now, this is the second in a series that I've done. Yesterday, I did the first one. When I took a look at Ten Hag's comments about having to restructure Manchester United, planning to restructure in and out of the club, I did that video previously yesterday. Today, I'm focusing purely on transfers because Eric Ten Hag has also said that he's aiming to plan ahead to January and plan ahead to the summer. And I want to speak about what I think would be phase two of Ten Hag's rebuild of this squad. What signings would he be looking to make? What were the most important and what I think he's going to prioritise? So make sure you subscribe to United People's TV. I'd love to have you on board. It's free. Get involved. Hit the subscribe button down there and hit the notification bell as well. And you'll never miss a video when we go live. But Eric Ten Hag has sort of sparked this conversation that we're having off the back of this. He said it after the game against Sheriff. He said, look, we will have many meetings during the international break. We have to improve the structures in and around the club. And as I said, I covered that in this video here where I run through what I think needs to happen so he's got a better support network inside Manchester United. Make sure you check that out. But specifically, we're going to focus on the second part of what he said here as well. We will also look to the window in January or next summer already, but also to improve our way of playing by making plans. So in terms of what's coming next, that's what we're going to be speaking about. I focus on the structure and the restructuring that is needed there. But let's focus here on the squad. Now, in my opinion, there are three key transfers or positions that I think Eric Ten Hag will be looking to do for Manchester United. The first one I'm going to speak about is a new right back. Now, I'm not saying that because Diogo Delo has been, he's been fantastic. He's been, he's been a bit of a breakthrough player, massive and massively improved. In terms of squad depth, we're weak there. If Delo was to get injured, that whole right flank changes. And when it comes to title winning squads, you need two key players in every position. So we, I think, will need to sign a right back. We would look in it, we would link with Serginio Dest, Denzel Dumfries, Chris Munier. We linked with Max Aarons before, loads and loads of players. I think right back, I think a new one will come in. So that would be my first, well not first, but that's going to be a priority. Number one priority, I would say is a centre forward. Absolutely, that's got to be number one on the list. Regardless of what happens with Ronaldo, whether he, he's not going to sign that contract. Ronaldo's gone at the end of the season, done and dusted. End the conversation, right? We needed a striker in the summer, let alone next summer. We're struggling and we need... That's where we need to spend the big, big money next summer. I don't know whether we're going to be able to do that in January, though, and we'll speak about that in a little bit. But absolutely, we need a striker. And in my opinion, we need one more central midfielder there. When Christian Eriksen was signed in the summer, he was signed, in my opinion, as a, as a supplementary signing. I don't mean that in a disrespectful way, especially given how good he's been. But we didn't sign Eriksen to start week in, week out for Manchester United. We were aiming for that to be De Jong and for Eriksen to play alongside him and for them to complement each other, switch in, switch out, so that the style of football could stay quite similar whilst also not overworking and overplaying an individual. We're overworking Eriksen right now, absolutely. And he won't last until the end of the season because nobody can. The season's too long. So in my opinion, they're the three areas I would say that need strength in depth. Priority, number one, central, uh, sorry, centre forward. I would probably say number two is a central midfielder, a la De Jong, a la whoever it's going to be, play there in the position that ericsson has been operating in. And number three, also another right back. I think they're the three priorities. But the problem, of course, is that January transfer window is coming up. And we all know it's notoriously difficult to sign players there. We've shown that it is possible to sign players there. We were linked with Bruno in the summer before, but we never really, I'm not sure we ever really put a bid in or ever really went after him. We didn't sign in there. We signed him in the January transfer window. But look at the impact he had across the course of the season. And we have made some absolutely pop class signings in the January transfer window before. But typically, it's difficult, notoriously difficult to get the signings that you want to get in the January transfer window halfway through a season. Right? And that's going to be the case this January transfer window. So in that sense, maybe what Manchester United will do is take a look at what contracts, what players are going, running out of contract come next summer and who could be available in any of these three key positions. If I'm being completely honest and we're looking at the January transfer window, I'll probably put a double circle around that in terms of priority. If, it, it, I think if we're going to sign anybody in the January transfer window, I think it's going to be a centre forward. 
And when you take a look here at the contracts expiring, let's run through this list and let's see if there's anybody that jumps out at us. We've got Milan Skriniar. Uh, Rashford, obviously his contract's running out, but I imagine he'll be signing a new one. I hope so anyway. Skriniar, we don't need... Well, no, we don't need a centre-back. We've got four first choices. Let's just pull this list up here. Messi, no. Oblak, no. Yuri Tillemans. That could be a conversation there. I spoke about the fact that we need someone in that position. Tillemans, I don't think particularly... I mean, for a free transfer. Yeah, I would take him. I mean, that, that's kind of a given. Thought Jorginho. Thomas DeMar could technically be a bit of a versatile attacker. But if you look down this list, you can go for... You can talk about Asensio. You can talk about Zaha would be an interesting conversation. Um, Memphis Depay. There's, I mean, Firmino. Benzema, nah, too old. Let's not do that. Let's not be crazy. Go down here. And there's one name on that list I, I think you could potentially have a conversation about. Moussa Dembele. But no offence to Moussa Dembele. I don't particularly think he's a man that we're going to be building any of our future around. That would be what we consider a stopgap signing. And I think Man United will really struggle when it comes to the January transfer window in pretty much any of these positions to sign somebody that wouldn't just be stopgap signing. And this is the reason I'm saying that. If you are a well-run football club and you plan far enough ahead, you can do what Liverpool did last season, where they decided to pull the trigger on signing Luis Diaz probably six months ahead of where they planned to. It was always, in, it was always planned to be signed, but because they were in that title chase, they needed a sort of a supplement up front, boom. They went out and got Lewis Diaz and he had an incredible impact on their team. So much so that they lost the Champions League final and finished second in the Premier League. Whoopsie. But fair play to Liverpool for having that sort of forward planning. That allowed them to go in January, spend the sort of money that they would have spent on Lewis Diaz in the summer. But they signed him in January. Now, I don't think Manchester United have the ability to do that yet. If we're looking at somebody who's going to be a supplement for Delow in January... It will probably be a stopgap. Somebody who comes into central midfield, it's not going to be a, like a big, it's not going to be a, a Frankie de Jong level signing, is it? It would probably be someone like, more like Yuri Tillemans level signing. Somebody who would supplement the squad quality in depth, wouldn't be coming in as a first choice completely. And Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh, I mean, look, he might even angle for a move away again in January, depending on what's going on. I don't particularly think he will. I think he'll be to the end of the season. But I can't particularly see Manchester United. Uh, Having the four planning to do a Luis Diaz type signing, where we go out and we signed Bruno, for example. Our, I don't personally think that we're going to be seeing a Bruno level signing in January. I think Eric Ten Hag will absolutely be planning for it. And he's even he's already started speaking about it, which is a I wouldn't say it's a strange thing, but it's it's quite an, an, an honest and open thing, and it, I, I quite like it. He is planning towards going to get someone, but I don't think we'll be able to get someone on the level of Bruno. We might be able to unearth a gem like Evra or Vidic. Two players that were brought in, struggled towards the start, but grew into being some of the most important players that we've had in the modern era. And then Juan Mata, who was signed desperately because Moyes was absolutely floundering. Mata was a good signing, but that was a desperate signing. Eric Ten Hag won't sign players for the sake of signing players. He made that abundantly clear during the summer, and then we just went on out of it. Adrian Rabio, Casamit, yeah, in you get. And it all got a bit pickledy pickledy. I think it ended up quite well. We were overpaid massively. And as I said, I've covered all of that in terms of the structure of transfers and what's needed. I covered that in that video yesterday. But today I'm talking about actual signings that I think Ten Hag will be making. And in my opinion, looking at this, I'll do a more in-depth video on this a little bit later in the season where we look at each position and maybe three, four, five targets for each one. But in my opinion, and I've double circled that, that's the importance of signing a centre forward next. And then I think we need another central midfielder of the Ericsson ilk that we can rest and rotate without losing the quality in the 11. And I think we need a backup right back as well. Or maybe potentially a first choice right back, depending on what the, comp the, the competitiveness. Look, Tyrell Malasia was signed technically as a backup left back. And now he's our first choice left back because he's that good. But I think that's what Eric Ten Hag will be working on, planning on and talking about during his meetings this week when it comes to transfers, the January transfer window and the summer transfer window. You can let me know what you think about that all in the comments below. Do you think that we would be able to pull off a Bruno type signing? Or do you think it's more likely that we might sign somebody who's a little bit under the radar? Or do we have, will we have the capability of doing that? Do we have the scouting network to even identify an Evra or a Vidic? 
It's another question to have. You can let me know what you think in the comments below. And you let me know as well. Maybe there's some names I've missed on this list. Have a look through the free agents. Let me know if you think there's any that we should be looking at. Make sure you subscribe if you're new as well.